Hello, welcome, I'm Hannah, and happy Sephora sale eve. I bet by this point your feed is probably filled with people telling you what you should buy from the sale or reasons why you shouldn't shop the sale, and I figured I would just offer in my two cents and the type of thought that I'm trying to personally enter the Sephora sale season with. I definitely do get sucked into the hype. That being said, I have like a little bit of a strategy for how I usually handle the sale, and it's what I've done the past couple years. I mentioned this also last year in my video about what I bought in the April Sephora sale, but I'll tell you again, I don't tend to shop at Sephora unless it's a sale time or unless I'm replacing something that I can't wait until the sale to replenish. That way, instead of just buying a ton of crap I truly don't need, I didn't want enough to buy full price, I am not buying anything full price, and the things that I would have been tempted to buy full price during the season, I just wait and I buy them on sale. I do definitely recommend that strategy, and I think it's good too because it's like it's like wish listing the things that you want. Like I'll add them to my cart, and throughout the months until the sale, I'll be kind of curating my cart, updating it. There's definitely things that I take out, definitely things that I add, and then I take out, and I can be pretty sure or as sure as I can be if something's been in my cart for months that it's not just like a really quick passing feeling. However, I think the thing about the sale that still like gets me, like I've felt that because of my strategy, the sale's not taking advantage of me, I'm taking advantage of the sale, but at the same time, it's always giving me a point that I'm going to shop from Sephora, and that's what they want. I'm not wishlisting and waiting until I'm truly ready to purchase something. I'm wishlisting and waiting until like Sephora is like, all right, now is the time to purchase all those things. And then I often buy too many things at once. I get excited. I want to buy things that I haven't been thinking about because I want to have like total surprise when I get them. And I end up spending often hundreds of dollars on things that I probably actually would have never bought had it not been for the sale. Even the things that are in my cart right now for the sale that I've been considering buying, a lot of it is replacements. The price is really high already, and the like couple of fun color cosmetics, I'm really trying to be honest with myself and be like, do I really need this? And if I truly do want to try some things, how many things can I give my full attention to at one time? Because I've learned also that if I buy 20 brand new products at a time, I can't review 20 brand new products in like a month, you know? At least not to the thorough degree that I would feel comfortable with. So all that being said, I thought the way that I could kind of be real with myself right now is by looking back at the things that I bought in last April's Sephora sale and talk about what was a good purchase. I'm going to put them on my face and we'll see how I feel about them. And I hope that will give me and maybe you some food for thought in deciding what to buy for this Sephora savings event. That's what we're supposed to say. I keep on saying Sephora sale, but Sephora savings event if you want to be all proper. Okay, we're zoomed in and I'm just going to start putting on my eye primer while I tell you what I bought last year. So the first thing that I did right when the Sephora sale went live on like the Thursday night, technically, you know, the Friday morning, was order the Skylar Vanilla Sky Candle. This, I feel like, you know, was a good decision because I love this candle. If I could only have one candle forever, it would be this one. It smells so, like, warm, kind of like a coffee shop, and I don't even like coffee. This is why I don't put on eye primer on camera. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I, I always put way too much on when I'm doing it, distracted. I don't know why. But yeah, I'm not even a coffee person, and yet I love the scent of Vanilla Sky, smells like a coffee house and it smells really good and I bought that using what I had remaining on a gift card that I had gotten from the previous Christmas. So I think I spent like five or ten dollars and it was like a sure thing because I love it. 
and I used it. I used it up within two months of the sale. No regrets on that. The next day, it was unseasonably warm in New York. Last April, we had like three or four days that I'm pretty sure were in the 80s. I'm pretty sure they were the 80s. If not, there was like the upper 70s, but it was like shorts and a t-shirt weather. It was beautiful. And the Friday morning that the sale started, I went to the mall and I remember it being like a really nice morning. It was just like, it was like a summer day after years of winter. And I really like relaxed and I walked around the store and I made a pretty decent sized purchase. One of the things I was really excited about was this Patrick Ta palette. This, you may remember, came out many years ago. I feel like this came out in like 2019 or 2020 and it hadn't been on my radar until a couple months before the sale when I had been just kind of browsing in Sephora and I like, it just caught my eye in that, in that special way. It communicated with me. It was like, you might be interested in me. And I was like, I might be interested in you. When I was at the store, this was the only one left. So that kind of like sealed it in also that, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like meant to be. And my opinion on this palette is pretty favorable. I will say this is like, this is no, no shade to myself because I had no way of knowing this, but a couple months after I bought this, they ended up coming out with the all matte version. And because I was really buying this for the mattes, that would have been a better purchase for me. But I had no way of knowing that like me buying it like three years after they released it would just happen to be two months before they released a better one for me. But maybe the thing I should have known was that I wouldn't reach for the shimmers. And maybe you can tell I used this, the, like this top shimmer for my inner corner once and it was too thick and I never used any of the other shimmers. I've also never used these creams. And I feel like that I could have been honest with myself and predicted that I wouldn't reach for these shimmers that even though I like, I remember them swatching nicely in the store but I know they're not as interesting as the neutrals that I have with my Indie Single Shadows. And two dark creams, like I don't even have anything that I want to do with those. So then that begs the question, is it worth it to buy a palette for only a couple of shadows? Was having access to like these three shades worth $56? Because that's the price it was at the sale price. I think also I would be, I would be feeling a little bit less potentially remorseful if these were like my absolute favorite mattes in my collection. But I would guess I've used this palette under 10 times in the past year. 10 times is probably even a high number, but let's just say 10 times. That means that each time I use this, it's like I paid $5.60 to use this palette. On those days, I bet if someone was like, do you want to use a matte that you already have? Or do you want to pay $5.60 and have access to the Patrick Ta palette? I would be like, I'll use the shadow that I already have. I do still think though we have like the potential to get to know each other a little bit better. I still do think highly of it. There's other palettes that I've gotten in the past that within a year I'm like, this feels like a piece of trash. This still feels like a nice fancy thing. But maybe my takeaway from this palette could be that this year instead of buying new shiny eyeshadows, I can put that energy to exploring this palette a little bit more because it still in a lot of ways is new to me. The shade kind of looks like a satin. I'm gonna try this out. I used this satiny shade in my crease, which was very pigmented. I found these shades to be a lot more pigmented than the mattes I tend to gravitate towards, which kind of intimidates me out of using them. And I think if I use this again, I'm gonna have to go in with a much lighter hand. The dark brown came up well. I use that for my outer V. And then I used the dark brown shimmer, which was fine. And the slightly less dark brown shimmer is a much softer formula. But again, I still think I would opt for my indie single shadows over using these shimmers again. And even for the mattes, I feel like I would have rather used Pretties for Your Face Moby if I was gonna use like a yellowy tone satin in my crease. And I'm sure I have other dark browns. 
Another thing I bought in store was a Sephora favorites kit and I was excited for that one because it was all vegan and cruelty free products and since I've only purchased vegan and cruelty free products I feel like it's pretty rare that I get to engage with one of those like pre-made kits. But two of the things I was most excited about, the freckle pen and the drunk elephant bronzy drops, they just felt like they didn't fit in with my routine. I talked about this in a declutter video, I think, when I was decluttering those, that it's like, they felt like cool products to have, but I'm not missing them if I don't use them, and I haven't thought about them since I've decluttered them. And realistically, I probably wouldn't have purchased them if I wasn't enticed by this idea of getting a good deal in this little favorites kit. Other things in there were the Makeup by Mario lip balm, which burned my lips and I decluttered. It had the Tower 28 facial spray, which I do think is a nice spray. I have it with my skincare. I've probably remembered to spray it on my face maybe three times. It has that Way St. Bart's scrub, which I remember Lauren May Beauty was raving about and I was so excited to try it. And I don't think I've used that sample. I've smelled it. I'm like, oh yeah, this smells good, but like fine. And I feel like I could have accomplished that just by sniffing it in the store. It wasn't worth it as like a selling point of the kit. So yeah, definitely did not get my $38 worth with that kit. I had also bought two blue eyeliners, both of which I think are really nice, but both of which I barely used. I have this dual-ended Charlotte Tilbury one. It is a nice product. It's a lovely product. Just like the Patrick Ta, it feels like a little special thing and I think of it highly, but the blue is kind of too dark for me to want to wear on my waterline on a regular basis. So I feel like I've only used this maybe five times at the most. And then I have this Urban Decay blue kind of like liner pen. The packaging's annoying because it's super long and I've totally forgotten I had this. Actually, when I did the spray makeup video like two weeks ago, I used a periwinkle shadow as a liner and I feel like I could have just used this, did not think of it at all. I would be surprised if I've used this at all since the month of the Sephora sale last year. Not my neatest work. I'm pretty sure when I used this in the video last year, I was saying that I feel like I'll get the hang of it more when I use it more and then I'll be better at it. Clearly did not happen, but it's fine. See how dark that looks? It'll look a little bit more normal after I have a darker shadow on my lash line also, but that's why I never reach for it. I put on my base because I didn't buy any complexion products. I also didn't buy any cheek products in the first haul, but there was a second haul. They know what they're doing with the length of the sale. I feel like people can try to rationalize it of they're giving you freedom about when to shop or you can come back and you can use the coupon again so if you forget something it's fine. But they know that people are going to be making a big order and then a week and a half which is going to feel like a long time when you're being inundated with everyone's haul and the you need this culture and all that and a lot of people are going to make a second big order. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I bought the things that I had wanted for a longer period of time in the first haul. So for the second haul, I was finding things to want and you could guess I had a much smaller success rate in the second purchase. I bought one of the Charlotte Tilbury nipple blushes, the like pillow talk one, and it was just not special enough to be worth the nearly $40 even when it's on sale, and I did end up returning that. But one thing that I kind of took a chance on, and by chance it ended up working out, is this Rare Beauty contour stick. I believe at that time I was either out of bronzer or nearly out of bronzer, and I was looking for something to replace it with. I don't think I had ever used a cream bronzer product before, but this one does happen to be very like easy to use and creamy and I have no issues blending it out with my hands so I didn't feel like I needed to then look for a brush to go with it. I did use this I think every day until, until I bought the Huda Beauty one, which might have been in the November sale. So I might have used this every day for like six months, which is a long time, and I still like it. I think the only thing that I've noticed, which is probably just because I blend it with my hands, is that sometimes it can look a bit muddy. 
but especially in person I feel like the flaws of it aren't as noticeable as they might be on camera and I'm okay with that. I think of these Patrick Ta shadows as being pigmented in such a way that I'm kind of intimidated about like blending them, like putting them in my crease, but they're better for the lower lash line, but the fallout kind of tells me otherwise. It's something I can deal with, but since I already have so many shadows that don't have fallout, it makes me less understanding for shadows that do, that now I have to go through the extra effort of trying to cover up their formulation error. I added Luxy Cookie Dough to my inner corners. I had bought, tried, and returned a couple lip products. One from my in-store big purchase was the Summer Fridays Balm, and it was in like a the cherry color or something. It was pretty new at that time and I do feel like I bought it under like the right circumstances. Like I'm not trying to conflate here trying things that don't work out with like things I shouldn't have purchased because I feel like there's some things that with all the research in the world you can come to the conclusion that it's going to work for you and it still might not. So the Summer Fridays I feel like I did read reviews, I did watch some videos, and it just happened that it looked more pink on me than I wanted it to, and I ended up not liking it. And then in my final purchase, there were two that were definitely less researched and I didn't like them. I tried the Hourglass Satin Lipstick in Oasis, which I thought would feel kind of fancy, but the color just, it wasn't enough for me. And then the packaging, I remember I can't remember if it's the top or the bottom of the packaging, but it's slanted. I think it's the bottom, so I think it didn't like sit flat, and that bothered me, if I'm remembering correctly. And I also bought the Tower 28 lip liner, or technically it's the one liner, lip liner, eyeliner, cheek pencil, yeah right, in the shade Work of Art. And I remember that feeling very much like the cheapest lead pencil that they'll give you during an exam if you forgot your pencil didn't like that. The three that I kept, this was from my in-store purchase, and this was actually a replacement. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Cheat. I had bought this during the previous Sephora sale, and then my bag got stepped on, it was broken in half, I was upset about it, and I waited for the sale to repurchase it. As time has gone on, I've discovered it's a little bit more pink than my perfect lip liner is, but I still do use it a decent amount. And if I pair it with a lip that's not also quite pink, then it kind of like neutralizes itself on me. And then the two that I bought and kept from my final day of the sale purchase are also Charlotte Tilbury products. I think you can see I tend to like the fanciness of Charlotte Tilbury products and a lot of more luxurious brands aren't cruelty free so I feel like I tend to put a lot of energy onto Charlotte Tilbury. Both of these were obviously nice enough to keep but not my favorites. This, I used this in the spring makeup video recently actually in conjunction with the Pillow Talk lip liner. It's like a light pink lipstick and I'll use it to like brighten the center of a lip look, but if I use it on its own, it's way too pink, but it, I, I like it. Like I feel like of the three, this is probably the one I would elect to keep if someone was like, you can only keep one of these. And then this gloss. This I almost decluttered at the end of the last year. I'm not even sure. I might have said I did and then I decided not to. It just feels so nice. This is like the walk of shame gloss the cap. I just feel like it's so cute and it's so nice, but on my lips it's just not perfect. It's a little bit more berry than I want it to be. It's just not perfect. I haven't used it in a while, so I think I'm just gonna pair these two together for right now and forego the pink lipstick. It looks nice, but I think it just reads as a little bit more of a color than I want it to. Like buying and using a lip product, it should be about this, but I feel like in the case of this lip gloss, I like this more than I like this, you know? I do think this makeup looks pretty awesome, but that wasn't really the question. The question is, am I actually going to use these products more or am I going to flood my collection with more products that will make me even less likely to reach for these products that I already have? 
It is definitely interesting to look back at these sale purchases from a year ago and realize that the things that I'm qualmless about, that I feel qualm-free about, are the things that I researched to the best of my ability and was kind of honest with myself about what I expected the product to be, or replacements. I think the sales definitely bring this excitement to curate the perfect cart. This is your time to try a bunch of new things. But I do kind of feel looking back like hundreds of dollars were spent just for the excitement of the moment of buying them. Because owning the Patrick Ta palette for a year hasn't like impacted my life. So I think what I want to try to ask myself before I make my Sephora sale purchase this year is, am I doing this for the excitement of right now? Like for the excitement of opening the box or driving home with my cute little curated Sephora shopping bag? Or am I doing this to own and use the products for the next year and going forward? I'm looking at my cart now and I definitely do have a lot of replacements that I want to buy, but I feel like beyond that, my goal is going to be to limit myself to maybe like one or two fun things. Because again, I don't want to zap all of the fun out of like makeup and shopping, but I want to be realistic and not spend hundreds of dollars on things that I'm going to be kind of like overwhelmed by and forget about. I want to be able to ask myself like in months, like what were my fun purchases from the Sephora sale and be like, oh yeah, number one, number two, you know? That feels more approachable to me and that feels like a way to ensure I'm not going to lose these things within my collection. I'd love to hear if you plan to shop the Sephora sale, what will be or would be your one or two fun things. And I'll definitely share mine. I plan to do a video sometime soon about the makeup that I've purchased so far this year. So I'm going to wait to do it until after I make my purchases and then I can include what I decided to get in that video. Also, let me know if you enjoyed this and then I can do it again for the fall sale because last fall I definitely bought way more than I bought in the spring sale that we just talked about. So yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this format. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I also have a Patreon I'll have linked down below, a clothing channel I'll have linked down below. Either way, thank you so much for being here. Bye.